Hello, good evening, good evening, Dr. Pelle, Dr. Danke. I'm very happy to see two stalwarts professionals and who spent a lot of time, two, three decades in their professional and writing work. It's a pleasure and I think it is a great opportunity for me to learn a lot from you both. First thing from both of you, which I want to know is that how is it and why is it? It has been bothering me all these years that most of us don't do what is in our best interest. You know, we do things which are not in our best interest. We know this should be done. This ought to be done. This is good for me. But despite that, I don't do all such things. What is the basic reason for this? Any of you ladies first, I know Dr. Janki can take on this first and then uh, Dr. Pillay can be muted. Yes, Dr. Janki. What do you think? Why do we do uh, that? What is not in our best interest? Okay. So, okay. Thank you. Um, well, we do what is not in our best interest because we have two types of thoughts within us. One th type of thought which understands what is in our best interest. We call it in Vedanta Buddhi, the intellect. And another type which understands what is our pleasure. We call it the manas or mind in Vedanta. So very often we sacrifice our future for our present. We treat enjoyment as if it's some kind of emergency situation. I have to have it right now. We make an emergency, an urgency out of the enjoyment and uh, pay for it with our future. It means we don't do what's in our best interest. We don't understand the whole picture of things. And, you know, maybe if I just give up, like it's so much easier for me to just whip out my credit card and buy something I can't afford rather than think about how I can build up my financial, my finances over a period of time. It's so easy for me to eat a burger rather than think of my health. So in everything I go after the pleasure of it. I follow my mind, the manas, in, in Sanskrit manas, okay. instead of following the yes. this. Sorry? Dr. Pele, I, I thought Dr. Pele is going to say okay. yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Colonel Chivaji. As Dr. Janki rightly pointed out, you know, it's all good. So two things generally happen why we don't follow what we are good at. Is number one, we don't know what we are good at. So, you know, sometimes it's a discovery okay. process. So in the Chanakya terminology, or I would say even Vedanta talks about finding a swa dharma. You know, many times we don't know what we are good at. So the day you discover it, then you say, okay, I want to do this. So many people know what they're good at, but still don't follow it because of many reasons. And one of the major reasons, maybe till our generation was finance. So let's say, you know, we were all the kind of a people who wanted to maybe follow the passion of being, a, uh, you know, an artist or a singer. But what happens is that, you know, a lot of family responsibilities made people not to follow what they were good at, probably. So one is not discovering. And the second could be a lot of other practical reasons, not just finance. You know, there could be some other uh, uh, practical reasons because of which we are not able to do it. So I think um, uh, what's very important is that if you find what you are passionate about, what you're good about, then you have to uh, find out a practical way of making a living or a passion. In the Japanese culture, it's called uh, finding an ikagai, where you not only are passionate about it, but also you find a way to make it a living and also make it inspirational to us. <laughs> Certainly come to that, Dr. Pillay, I certainly come to that. And now, Dr. Jadki, Vedanta, you have propagated, you have learned, you have been a teacher, student, all these 30 years, since 1988, I suppose. Uh, I, as I understand, Vedanta is the art of how to think right, so that you understand how to live good life. That is the art of life, the skill, and the techniques which go with this. How do we learn that? That is through our thinking, our thoughts. Now, what do you have to say? I mean, in simple terms, if you have to say what Vedanta is, and if those viewers you know, who are listening to you, watching you, they understand the good of Vedanta, how good it is and how it can benefit uh, ordinary individuals. 
So Vedanta is just about learning to live life. It's it's just that much. We find there is nothing anyone is teaching us on how to live life. One of the like I don't know craziest things, the Bhagavad Gita is written. I don't know five ten thousand years. I mean it's it's debatable, but many thousand years ago, and it's relevant today. Isn't that shocking? Because whatever were the problems that Arjuna went through, we are still going through that. Has humanity learned nothing in this time? Have we still not figured this thing out? Like in every other area, we've done so well. We don't fight with bows and arrows. We don't walk everywhere we go. We we don't have to live just in the geographical location that we were born in. In every other area, we don't have the kind of uh, What's so the financial difference that was there earlier? Today, even relatively not well-to-do people have amenities and facilities which 300, 400 years ago even the the kings didn't have. So you know we have narrowed these margins, but we as human beings, it's like we didn't get it at all. We didn't get how to have a relationship. We didn't get how to deal with challenges. We didn't get. How to be able to put your head on the pillow at night and go to sleep? What is the big deal? We can't achieve this much. We don't know what to do with our bodies. We have lifestyle ailments. Like, what's wrong with us? Don't we think? So Vedanta provides eternal principles. That's why the other name is Sanatana Dharma. Principles that are eternally true. If we live in accordance to those principles. It's like knowing the science laws. If you live according to the science laws, obviously whatever you're dealing with will work well. If you're running a car and you know how to run it, you will run it well. If you're running a whatever sewing machine and you know how to run it, it will run well. If you don't know how to run this life, it won't run well. It will be problematic. It will make car car noises. It will do all this stuff. So Vedanta just gives the manual for living. Now, oh, Dr. Pillay, uh, I know something about uh, Chanakya because I wrote the review of one of your books, and that book is this me. I wrote it for the Tribune in 2010, and I said it is profound wisdom which Dr. Pillay has given us. Now, the point is that we know Chanakya in India mostly because of our Shastra, because of. 2000 years back whatever he wrote i think tanakya has not got its due in india because we have been following japanizing you know J- japanese management though we have our own value system our own cultural ethos but we have been following the japanese management why not the indian management indianizing management what do you say about this dr pillay Uh, first of all thank you kanul sir for writing the review on the book because you people have promoted the book in a big way first of all accept my uh, thank you for that thank you thank you sir yes uh, uh, you know you rightly pointed out that it has not got its due and i primarily believe that the reason is that people were not even aware of it you know as mm-hmm. dr janki rightly pointed out these are all eternal principles so if you don't get to the principles in the right way you will never be able to bring it out to the new generation so i think what's was important is that uh, you know we have to get uh, things from the library to the common man and many times when we have the academic writings many times when you have the academic writing it becomes a little bit very complicated uh, because not the common man hello hello dr uh dr pille are you there i can't hear you i can't see you dr pille uh there seems to be some technical problem i think dr pille is we have lost connection with dr pille i'll come to you dr janke in the meantime You see, Doctor Danke, can you hear me? Yes. Are you with me, Doctor Danke? You can hear me. Yes. Yes, okay, I okay. can hear you. Doctor Danke, uh, you know, uh, you see, uh, this is thinking Vedanta tells you 
the way techniques of thinking now compulsive thinking to my leads to irrational thinking and you know irrational thinking is that you develop logic bubble around you and i think is right that is logic bubble my own logic to argue out something and justify it because of my compulsive thinking which leads me to irrational thinking what do you have to say about this ma'am yes of course this is definitely what happens that is why our thinking has to be based on some facts and this is these are the facts that vedanta provides us if we just start on our own just thinking whatever we want we will be you know like you're saying thinking in a vacuum but we have to sort of compare what we are thinking to some facts of life welcome back um so um, we uh, have so to back, have yeah. yeah so we have to have some fixed points we have to understand that you know these are the sanatan dharma these are the principles so whatever my thinking is should be based on that like i have to solve my geometry problems with the help of my theorems not with something else altogether if you don't do that then your geometry your buildings will not stand up your bridges will not work and no, nothing is going to happen so it has to be based on facts that we have already gathered not like arjuna wake up and say oh my god if i kill these people then this will happen and that will happen no who told you all these things will happen that's what um you know krishna tried to draw to his attention that no no this is not the right thinking this logic is not right then this will happen this will happen this will happen you are starting at the wrong point and therefore you are saying these things if you re examine the first point you are good i mean you won't go down this street okay dr pillai we last you if you say something kindly go ahead yeah am i audible now better yes, yes. okay perfect yes, perfect, perfect. sorry for the internet issues so your question uh, uh, karun sir was about uh, why chanakya has not been you know brought out large and everything i like to thank you for writing a review of the book making it famous and corporate chanakya has been extremely well the reason i think uh, is maybe we are not even aware of our great indian literature the treasure of the past and you know it starts with our modern education system i'm not saying it's bad but what i'm saying is that india has so much of glorious past but you know you don't know where to start so i think one of the things you said about kautilya arthashastra which is also a book on war all techniques and lot of other things has been lying there in the academic libraries and not many people have tried to make it a common subject as you know vedanta being one of the things where we need to bring it to the masses get the bhagavad gita not just as a book meant for some certain sector of the society but for everyone so i think uh, chanakya was a practical philosopher and a realistic guru who dealt with the reality of the society and we have lot of his principles like samadana danda bheda enemies enemies a friend he wrote about economics modern day management but you know somebody uh, or a few group of people like us have the responsibility of bringing back that ancient wisdom in a no- modern format so i think my little contribution and thanks to all the support of friends like you has been to modernize chanakya reinterpret chanakya otherwise you know there is a danger with our culture you we glorify you have made it into a brand as a matter of fact you Absolutely. have made it into a brand and we are so proud of it that you see the point if i may say so dr pillai is that the context in which it was written 2000 years back yes. now things are different if we have to integrate his thinking and principle that whatever philosophy and policies he gave and management practices he talked about Right. If we have to integrate that with the modern management techniques and procedures, etc., etc., right. we have to modernize that. The kind of effort which you are making, I have seen most of your videos and I have read Chanakya Niti, your latest book. Now yes. Chanakya Niti has been used by the politician in a you know way of cunning success. I mean, this is what we. It is cunning success. Yes. Uh, jan ke niti but actually what it means is something different what do you say about this uh, dr pill yeah so i think uh, the two key words that is get confused is uh, it was- strategy versus manipulation you know a lot of people think that chanakya was a manipulator <laughs> and a manipulator is almost like a selfish person who wants to get his things done but i think strategy is far beyond manipulation a lot of people also misinterpret him saying that kutila niti 
remember friends if you are dealing with a person who is not following dharma you cannot follow dharma so it is actually something which is very practical so you are right that you know there is a lot of misunderstanding and misinterpretation of chanakya so i think we need to look at the context if you are dealing with a sinner you should know how to deal with him but if you are dealing with a saint you should know how to deal with it so i think one of the very important thing is that you have to be smart to deal in the real world so he wrote about economics warfare management criminal psychology and also spoke about the principles of spirituality for him the ideal leader was raja rishi raja but thinking like a rishi yes, what please. great philosophy yes. you know uh if i may come to dr janki ma'am uh the concept of renunciation in action and not off action you see guru nanak also talked about that it is very easy to the world and go and you know praying and you know look for what you want actually uh you know going through or uh, uh, doing your divine duties or obligations which you've been given there are certain duties given by the god almighty the creator there are certain duties which we allot to ourselves now those divine duties or liabilities which have been given by the creator uh if they have to be performed uh if they have to be performed what what do you do how do you uh, go about doing it it is a very 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 difficult thing for anyone ordinary person to do uh, what if you say about this uh yes it's a very very important and practical question actually and we really have to reexamine this concepts for in vedanta as you rightly said it is renunciation in action not off action okay. and yeah. which basically means that you are doing your duties so very important for under, for us to understand is let us define what the word duty means okay first and foremost and then we'll find out everything else so duty is defined as all those actions that take you to your ideal in life Mm-hmm. So you have set for yourself a higher goal, an ideal. You have a vision of your life, some higher purpose in life. Mm-hmm. Everything that you do that takes you to that duty, to that goal, becomes your obligatory duty, becomes your niyatam karma. Anything that takes you away from that, you say mm-hmm. no to, and that's called self-control. self control is just it's not about making lists of things that we will do and not do but it is a clear understanding that if i do this thing i will go towards my goal and if i do this thing i'll go away so whatever that other thing is i won't do it so everything that takes me to my goal is what i'm going to do that is my obligatory duty now if you are dedicated to your goal okay if you think your goal is something worth achieving then why say that it's my duty oh my god i have these duties i have this responsibility i have this frankenstein sitting on my head no you don't you chose it god hasn't given you these duties your parents haven't given you these duties society hasn't given you these duties you chose them when you chose to get married you chose those duties you could have chosen not to get married if you choose to start a business you choose those duties so why are you behaving like oh my god duty 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 for you what duty duty should be what your life is our whole life is our action more than anything else what are we going to do in our life maximum as an adult is our work so how can you not enjoy your work and if you're enjoying your work then renunciation is of what am i going to get what am i going to get will i get this will i get that my god this happened my god that happened all the waste of time that we do our mind going into the future and our mind going into the past if we stop doing this it is called renunciation in action it is okay. just that simple you know so I and mean, it is a practical I philosophy mean. yes it's a very practical Wait. way of achieving whatever we want absolutely may kindly tell me has tamakya uh, something about this also in uh, india my great country i am very proud of this country mediocrity and dishonesty these are the bane of indian workers indian professionals i mean i have seen it very closely having worked in armed forces after that in corporate 
I have seen it that mediocrity is a way of life. Professional dishonesty is accepted, and everyone says it is all right because it comes from top. I mean, whatever uh, work ethos we have in India. Uh, does uh, Chanakya say something? Some some treatment for this kind of cancer? Sir, you hit the nail. You know, I think uh, it's very very important to understand. We cannot accept mediocrity as a part of our life. It has become a very very deep cancer in our society. but the good news is that it was not always it is only the last few generations we believed in yes. the concept of beauty and commitment let me take off from where dr janki spoke about you know vedanta bhagavad gita talks about everything starts with the top yadada acharati shreshtah tadda devitaro janah so if the leaders are corrected everybody is corrected because the work eto starts from the top not from the bottom up even though the bottom is important the leaders and chanakya was a leadership guru he says if you want to change the society change the leaders but it is not just changing the leaders it's also training the leaders i think uh, in the armed forces you have yeah. seen that oh, yeah. the the niti use kar kar ke theek karte hai discipline doesn't come just like that you know you have to imbibe discipline initially external discipline then it becomes an internal discipline so chanakya has a methodology of how to make a disciplined leader which results into productivity second question about corruption chanakya was very clear human beings have an inherent uh, you know greed for money power etc etc but if you don't use danda niti there is no control system what we call anti corruption bureau or whatever the laws in place the society will go to dooms good news is that we india have a literature and the good news is that it was already there it is not a ethiopian culture only thing is that we have to bring it back train the leaders make sure that it is not a small part of the society but maximum of part of the society follows and becomes productive efficient and result oriented that's chanakya's yes. productive model absolutely now dr janki my understanding of spirituality is limited to you know obeying the laws of nature and i always say that he order to obey the laws of nature what do you have to say what who is really a spiritual person a spiritual person very nice questions kanu uh, ji ma very nice a spiritual person yeah. a very uh, spiritual person is a person who by definition is a person who is willing to consider the possibility of something beyond the world and willing to put an effort to reach that thing so when we understand that something there is something in this beyond what i can think beyond something beyond and i'm willing to investigate that and i've un- so that the fact that i'm willing to investigate that makes me a spiritual person not going to temples churches or mosques not keeping fasts or making list of things that i do and don't do it is that investigation into something beyond that is what makes me spiritual and when i start the journey i realize that the only way i can reach that thing is by purifying myself so i use the tools of religiosity if i use the dr pillay may i ask you you know the our mba programs management programs why don't we have a subject about the chanakya you know whatever he told us and try to learn from that you see trying to integrate what we know new 2000 years back and what the new management modern management is telling us now does it not re- i mean it needs a paradigm shift i understand but uh, is that kind of thinking there anywhere in the a uh, higher education system or you been able to propagate this idea yeah uh, absolutely right you know i been fortunate that uh, i been uh, you know uh, an instrument in introducing chanakya in the higher education so at the university of mumbai okay. we actually have an institution it's called the chanakya international institute of leadership uh, uh, studies so like we have management studies we have okay. two year full time program on chanakya's uh, management and leadership ideas and the good news great, is that with the national education policy coming in it is going to be introduced in schools 
so you know my books Achha. have been uh, you know instrumental in igniting some uh, you know trigger and as they say instead of cursing the darkness you better light a candle thanks to friends like you it is becoming part of the mainstream education but the journey has just started you know so i think we need to work a lot with the teacher community with the educationalists and make sure that every child should learn about chanakya niti in the foundation stages itself so at one end vedanta bhagavad gita and the concepts on the other side chanakya you cannot fail anywhere <laughs> that's the way education has to absolutely be. i totally agree with you uh, dr janki kindly tell me if i have to know how congruent is my life and how can i if there are how do i detoxify myself uh, my life is not congruent because of any number of reasons whether it is emotional turmoil physical financial whatever so because of that uh, i have a toxicate i want to detoxify my life and i want to understand how congruent is my life at present how do i do that how congruent my life is at present is pretty simple can you put your head on the pillow and be off to sleep in 10 seconds and then you're good <laughs> yeah, i mean you're totally at peace that I everything that is yes, the best thing in the world is clear conscience <laughs> right yeah you're happy with life whatever your life is you're happy with it now how do you make it congruent there are um, steps in the process first is what dr pillai had already spoken about finding your swadharma your own nature finding all the things that this body mind intellect require and choosing a field of interest uh, of capacity of ability and first that's our first step in life what is my field of interest is it business or is it army or is it art or whatever it is choose that and having chosen that fix a higher ideal in life mm-hmm. uh, you know like uh, chanakya had ek chhatra for the country and one ruler for the country not like broken up into million pieces so one ideal whatever it is and then get down to working that's it get down to working and then you will find yes. everything falling into place Oh, the aim should be to go up to the people, you know, like Swami Ji, who is greater than his deeds. You know, that, these kind of people look up to them, and you want to do something so that you are able to, you know, lead a meaningful life. Uh, Doctor Pillay, kindly tell me. I mean, you've done so much of work. Ten books you have written, and I see a lot of your videos, and you go I and I T S and even armed forces and all. Uh, I i understand a leader is the one leadership is of the spirit you know it, it is of the spirit how do you develop it is the responsibility of every leader to develop more leader right but how do you develop a leader how do you really do that uh, i think uh, there is a good news that there is a leader in each one of us only thing is that it is not discovered yes. so what has happened is that the field of expression could be different so everybody need not be a political leader so the impression mm-hmm. that we have about leadership is somebody who is a president the prime minister or a chief minister you know that's not true you can be the mm-hmm. captain of a sports team you can be the chairman of a society now what does leadership mean there are principles of leadership as well and there is a process of leadership so that two piece chanakya talks about one is the principle there is whatever whichever field you are army or politics or maybe a corporate leadership the principles are the same but what you require the skills are different for example let's say i am running a sports team i need to have empathy i need to have you know inspiration vision all these things are common if i am a national leader also i need to have you know empathy i need to have you know vision but you know depending on the field of expression suppose i am a sports leader i think i need to understand the skills of the sports for example if i am a cricket captain i should know how to use the skills of that game even army person i should know the strategies in the war if i'm a businessman i should know how to make you know financial money in the dharma way so i think what uh, is very important is that there is a leader in each one of us but it requires a guru to discover it <laughs> so that's I where suppose, uh, all all those people who have achieved primary greatness they had three things in common to my mind courage yes. compassion humility correct i mean these things together you can extend your life as much as you want to now dr janki uh before we leave we are running out of time now 
that uh, in the book that uh, Vedanta Tita's, I read the poem, the complete poem Swamiji has given, this shall also pass away. Okay, even this will pass away. Now, this is a great thought. I mean, you are in misery, problem, and you think of good things, and the thing is gone. You are happy, and you are enjoying very good time. You know that this is going to pass away. So the real life is circular. You know, it goes and comes. What do you say, your party advice, uh, Dr. Janki? Yes, Vedanta is full of these laws. One of the primary laws, um, what should we say? First principles of life is that everything changes. Nature means change. So Vedanta is nothing but a conglomeration of all these laws. Like that beautiful poem, even this will pass away. The king is talking, you know, the king is going through so many experiences, good and bad. Uh, but they change. So this is what we have to understand. We are in lockdown now. Okay, there was a life before that. There is this life currently. Now, this is also going to change. Why don't we enjoy this life while it's there? Otherwise, you know, when that life was there, we, was, we were grumbling about it. Now, when this life is there, we're grumbling about this. And when it changes again, we grumble about that. So the only constant yeah, is the grumbling. Absolutely. So why not? Like, this is great. Uh, What's wrong with this? You sit at home, you go to a lit fest. Like, this is fantastic. What's wrong with it? It's fantastic. So why not just enjoy it? Actually, the we are all work in progress. And you see, uh, the Vedanta and management of Tanakya, whatever. Now, these two will be meeting somewhere. You know, they have a meeting point. Both, yeah. both these concepts, ideas as you rightly brought it out, that they have a, they can be integrated. They actually have the same kind of, you know, fountain from where they are coming, both the things. So thank you so much, Dr. Janki and Dr. Pele. I have learned a lot personally and said that the viewers would have also gained a lot. I wish we had more time and we could speak for some more time, but the limitation of time, now I have to end there. Thank you so much, Dr. Pille and Dr. Jan. We're grateful to you for your day. Thank, Thank you, Jan. You, so uh, you, 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 you've been a great moderator. Oh, Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. I, I I'm totally so happy that armed forces people are not considered that good in these kind of things, but I suppose I have done my bit. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> you Thank you so much. Thank you, Jan. In one of your videos, you were giving the example of cutting the snake and, you know, the first six inches of the snake is to be cut off and then you can eat. We do that in our forces. Yes. We talked about the fire king, fire and snake. These are the three things one has to be very careful about, Dr. Pillay. <laughs> talk about that. Thank you so much. Very kind of you. Thank and you we, so I had a wonderful time you. and I'm certain that you enjoyed our talk. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you both.